one of the basic points that we are going to get into this point is that our understanding towards symbolism, approaching from that your desire to learn more, you want to find out more and more constantly, is questionable at this point. The reason why that is questionable is because that there are a lot of aggression is taking place. Aggression not in the sense of that you are angry, you keep on losing temper, but aggression in the sense of fundamental obstacle that when you get really angry, your eyes get a bloodshot and you can't see your vision properly or your voice begins to stutter, you can't speak properly and you begin to become mean vegetable. That's the kind of question that we're talking about. It is greatest obstacle to see any kind of perceptual level to perceive symbolism that we discussed yesterday, the other day rather, that we've been talking about that in terms of um, if you really see the city of Boulder, if you really see the mountains of Boulder, and if you really see the skies of Boulder, there is no aggression. But I am somewhat doubt that you really have actually seen it. <clears throat> I'm very doubtful. <clears throat> And this particular remark is not necessarily condescending or putting down your honorable existence. But this is a reminder. I doubt that you actually have done it. Maybe you have tripped all along since the other day's talk. You tripped all along and you'll be tripping all the way. And maybe you haven't got anything together to experience what you should experience, supposed to experience. That's quite highly possible. It is possible because there's aggression, it's very powerful. The, as far as aggression is concerned, a sense of projecting towards an object that you want something great desires to grasp, recapture a certain particular experiences. And when that experience is captured properly, as a spider does to its flies, and then you can actually clutch to it and suck its blood. And then have some sense of easiness and refreshness taking place and that is a big question, a big problem that we have and the definition of a Dharma art as well as our honorifical setup as far as concerned, a Dharma art is referred to as personal experience of non-aggression. The aggression acts as a big veil to see the precisions and preciseness of the functions of <clears throat> absolute symbolism that we discussed the other day, as well as the, re the relative symbolism at the same time, at this point. That the only sense of remedy that we can think of, according to the traditional approach, is that surrendering seems to be the only way to overcome aggression. Surrendering in this point of view is not so much that you reduce yourself as a child jumping on somebody's lap, asking to be parents, particularly 
but surrendering this point is a, a sense of uh, you want to give rather than to whom you are giving particularly, but you want to give, you want to let go. <clears throat> there are all kinds of personal trips involved individually, spiritually, economically. Economically because you might be economic conscious and spiritually because you might have something that you want to work on, you don't want to give that up. And so forth. There are a lot of holding back on us which makes us more blind when we have holding back involved, which is aggression. And giving up, opening, surrendering from that point of view actually plays a very important part because finally you begin to actually let go of your aggression and you begin to say, get hell out. Go out to give, open, take some leaf, leap. That might mean giving into your own aggression so that let aggression take care of me, but I couldn't care less. Or you have some kind of faith and trust in some kind of basic truth that comes from the lineage, which actually speaks the truth of non-aggression at the same time. It depends on the level of your understanding of the whole thing. It is such a relief when you begin to give and give and give. And this point of giving from a point of view of uh, free from a con conventional idea of giving. In the conventional idea of giving <clears throat> is how much you have to give. If I have a ten dollars in my bank account, I might give Five, if I'm so generous, I might have to keep the rest of the five for my own upkeep. That's the way you give. It depends on how much you can hold back on your aggression and how much you give. That doesn't mean to say I'm trying to uh, raise money from you people particularly. <laughs> but that's just the idea that came to me in my mind is that you spend 50% of your aggression on giving, and then you would like to reserve your rest of the 50% as part of your maintenance, part of you holding up your trip, so to speak. That doesn't seem to be quite enough, absolutely not enough. You have to give the whole thing, give up the whole thing. And each time when you give, your vision begins to clear, your hearing system begins to clear. There's less wax in your eardrum. There's less filter through your pupils. And you begin to hear much better and see much better. When you give more and more of this uptightness of holding back and resentment back, begin to give much more and open much more, much more. You are not doing a favor to anybody particularly. And there's nobody to say, thank you, you have given me so much. If there is somebody who becomes like a, a country person who say, thank you for giving money to our church, that seems to be fake. But you don't give it to anybody, but you give it away anyway without anything expected to return. You just give give, give, let go. Each time you give, more clarity takes place that you're able to see the real meaning of symbolism that what we discussed the other night as well as the night before in connection with the twofold realities in terms of relative absolute symbolism can be also seen through very clearly. And the giving and opening oneself it's not particularly painful when you begin to do it, but it is very painful. The idea of it is very painful. 
when you be asked to give and take a leap, it's so terrible feeling. You feel the terrible that you don't want it, but you be asked to do it. Some of you are tickled by the idea of supposing if I did that, what will happen to me? Maybe I make some kind of breakthrough. Maybe I lose my whole thing in this world. <laughs> it's a very ticklish idea. And let, it, let's, let us go along with that inquisitive mind and give and open, open more, open further, open greatly, open completely. <laughs>